because then it'll download. Oh, okay. Hello, uh, we're back. Don't trust. Sorry, by the way, I didn't know that non-competitive candidates. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, that's okay. We're back. It's all fair. Well, we're having a snack break. Snack break. Come down to get some snacks. Woohoo! That's all I have. Yeah. Let me get your phone. Okay. And then can you unlock it and I will share it with the other page on the side and share it. I can just go on here. Okay. Share it to the official group page as well as the... As your oh wait, this isn't live in the debate? It is. No, no, no. I want... It is on the event page, but can you also share it to the official UCSC? Yes. Please, please. Oh, sorry. Hello. Hello. Oh, you say hi. hi. Is it working? Yeah. Okay. Look, it's Tamara. We're on Facebook Live. You might have to do a trust this computer pop up. Um, but then it'll download to my stuff. Ray says, I love you, Tamara. <laughs> Tamara, you're getting some messages on Facebook Live. People are saying they love you. Ray says he loves you and that Megan loves you. Yes. Everyone needs to speak up. Are you ready? Yeah, ready. Okay, everyone, if you can please take your seats. We're going to start with the next segment. So we'll be starting with Vice President of Student Life, and there will be two, contest two people contesting this position. So whenever you're ready, please introduce yourself, and then we'll start. Cool. So my name is Tamara Owens. Okay, I'm because of the last three, sorry. Yeah. Yes. My name is Tamara Owens. I'm a third year. I'm an Oaks affiliate. I'm a business management economics major with a concentration in accounting, and I'm the current vice president of Student Life. Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer Santos, or Jen Santos. My gender pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm from College 9. I'm a politics and sociology major. Thank you. And I'd like to remind you both to please speak up a little bit louder than you already are. Uh, just a reminder to both of you, the way this will work is I will ask one question, then choose one of you at random, and then the other one will obviously follow and answer that question after. You will each have two minutes to answer this question. Once both of you have answered it, then we will move on to the next question. And then at the end, you will each get concluding remarks in which I will choose one of you at random, and the other one will follow. Are there any questions? All right, we will start with the first question. It is as follows. This office is concerned with student wellness, including mental, physical, emotional, etc. How do you plan to balance putting on large-scale events while also advocating for student needs such as adequate mental health services? We will start over here. Okay, so these are really important issues that need to be addressed and with regarding mental health. Um, funny because today actually in the class I facilitate, I teach five minute class under the sociology department, we had the behavioral and health services from Santa Clara County come to speak to us. They have eight branches under them um, for different ethnic um, identities. Um, for example, the people who came today um, come from the Philippine X American um, department in the behavioral um, services. So with that being said, I would like to um, connect with them. I'm already connected with them for once and they're more than willing to come here on campus speaking to different um, identity groups here on campus um, within the student orgs, especially the ethnic organizations with, uh, which I work closely tied to. But I think um, personally I would do it on a more intimate and smaller um, base, community based um, regarding regarding what student orgs are a part of. And then having that, you know, building that connection within the smaller orgs, then that would broaden the range of it becoming a more well-known thing. For example, um, they work closely tied with the um, mental health first aid training, which we did um, because I'll be an RA next year as well. Um, and in regard to that, their services are free to us. And um, we did a free thing today. And I think working within the specific organizations, because I'm really community-based, I think overall in regards of advocating for the whole student life would would um, brighten up the whole, um, in, in, in order to um, have people more informed within mental health. So I think um, overall, um, I think working closely within the organizations, making personal connections, and training them about mental health would be more, more beneficial. Uh, I yield my time. Thank you very much. I will reread the question again. This office is concerned with student wellness, including mental, physical, emotional, etc. 
How do you plan to balance putting on large-scale events while also advocating for student needs such as adequate mental health services? So the way to balance is to start in the summer. This position starts July 1st, and that's when I actually started all this work. So things I've done with mental health already is that over the summer, I met with Gary Dunn, the director of CAPS, and we talked about the cultural competency of the counselors and the psychologists. And one of the things I asked him was, why don't we have students sitting on these hiring committees? Because currently CAPS is understaffed by about six people. And when I talked to him about it, he connected to me with Mary Jan, who's in charge of coordinating the hiring committees. And now we can currently have students who sit on the hiring committees. And that's something that I brought to the first meeting at SUA. And we actually had Carilla sit on one of those committees. So the very first one, you made the first meeting. But that's something I've already been doing. And in other regards, when it comes to mental health, um, CAPS is also starting, uh, CAPS also wants to go start promoting their app called WellCheck. And they want to go do a campus-wide event with other colleges and even communication with the SUA. I agreed to go take on that project. And we're going to be doing it closer to finals when students allow their, when students start taking up worse habits in regards to mental health. When it comes to planning campus-wide events, again, you already have to start that work over the summer during winter break. Over winter break, I was working on the comedy night featuring Hara Kanabulu in conjunction with the Asian, the Asian American Pacific Islander Resource Center, long word. But I started doing that work and that outreach looking for volunteers over, the, over winter break when I should have been taking a break, but I was working instead. The way to balance it is that you have to constantly be working from day one and you can't stop. Thank you. All right, we will move on to our second question. Besides programming, what else should the Office of Student Life provide for students? I'm going to start with Tamara. So aside from that, the, the Student Life Office should be meeting the needs of students. So again, one of the things that I've done this year was start the food pantry. That's something that's actually currently open, and so far we've helped over 70 people to go have free groceries. And inside we have not only fresh produce, but we also have a lot of vegan and vegetarian options as well. So we should be mean, so we not only, we should be meeting just the basic needs of students, like the insecurity. That's also, and there's other needs that we have to go meet as well. That's why earlier this year I released a student life survey. It was the one of the most successful surveys that the SUA has had this year. Over 2,600 <coughs> students responded. And the questions that I asked is, what do you want to see the SUA go focus on more for next year? Food insecurity is on the top one. Raising awareness about issues was number two, like mental health. That's why we're planning programs like having the mental health fair, which is Grace is starting. That's why I'm trying to go work on programs with CAPS to go have more campus-wide events with them. So I think we should be addressing the basic needs of students as long as planning campus-wide events. Thank you very much. Um, something that uh, I would like to work on um, if elected is activism. I'm a community-based person and activism is definitely important and that we need to put as a priority under student life. Yes, we can have many events. Yes, we can have fun um, as a university. But I think right now in today's political and social climate, activism is something that we need to address. I've been working closely within the ethnic organizations here on campus, the Big Five, which actually did start the SUA. And there's been a lack of representation. I've said in the SUA meetings, some of the big five organization representation didn't even show up. I guess, um, personally speaking, I feel like I have not been supported um, by SUA entirely throughout my past couple years here at UCSC, but I think bridging that gap between um, the ethnic organization and um, showing that activism here on campus is really important for student life. Many students join many organizations, um, and that's a huge part of student life, and I feel like um, bridging that gap, and I'm planning to have a reciprocation program under student life where I have a group of committees where I serve them because I do not want to work above them. I want to work with them together and work together to closely um, work with um, the different campus leaders, activist-minded leaders, many other leaders here on campus and work closely in relation to the different um, problems or different issues they have. I, I do not want to help them. There's a difference between helping and supporting, and I think supporting is something that I would like to address. And I think activism and bringing that into student life is important. Thanks very much. For our third question, after this position was created to replace that of organizing director, some students have perceived this as a way 
SUA has dis disfavored organizing. Do you agree with this? Why or why not? I'm going to start with Tamara again. So the reason why the organizing director position was taken away is because in 2015, the student governments was survey was sent out and it asked students to go assess the SUA and the things that people complained about the most above all or anything was that there was no campus, that there's no campus-wide events and there's no student life. So the current organizing director that year decided to come up with a constitutional amendment, go taking away that position and creating the vice president of student life instead. And then that was voted on by the whole campus and they decided that it was necessary to go have the student life position. That's how the SUA works. We do things, if we fuck up, we go ask the students what should we be doing better and we make adjustments to that. So yes, not all, not everything that we're going to be doing is going to be in favor of everyone. We're a democracy and how people vote, that's how we're going to act. Do I think that activism is not supported here? Absolutely not. When APSO is having the reclamation, I'm close friends with Amari and also Saran. Saran is in my accounting class, I tutor her. But I was in constant communication. I was the only officer that had their numbers to go talk to them, to go reach out if they ever needed anything. So I was there supporting activism. So I don't think activism is completely gone. Activism is done in the SUA with individuals making connections. And just because that position isn't there and we made adjustments within the SUA to go reflect what students needed, that doesn't mean that we're not helping the organizations and that we're not supporting students and we're not supporting activism either. Thank you oh, very I yield my time. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to reread the question again because it's a little bit longer. Um, after this position was created to replace that of organizing director, some students have perceived this as a way SUA has disfavored organizing. Do you agree with this? Why or why not? Okay, so uh, I respect everything you had to say. However, um, in the BPSL Constitution, D and G, it does say that the Vice President Student Life position has to make connections within SOAR and SOMECA, which I live by the student agency model, and I feel like um, we do have to organize more into student life and continue the activism. But I did mention the, the two, um, DG under the student life and the Constitution, S, and the SUA Constitution, because I feel like those, those parts in the Constitution has not been met, and I feel like it has been disorganized, yes, and activism definitely is important. And although many students think that SUA is a democracy, I feel as if it has not been. I feel as if student voices have not been heard. I feel as if student power has been misleading. And I feel as if my voice and the people I serve and the people that I stand with and stand by has not met. So organizing, mobilizing, reaching out to people, the import, knowing the importance of SIO Weekend, and justice program over summer, which I had attended the summer before I came to UCSE, under engaging education, working closely with our allies, organizing and mobilizing, we need to get back on that track. Having many student leaders, not just myself, other people that I know, I see many familiar faces here. I'm happy Mitch is out here, FSA is out here. Uh, Destiny from APSA came here early, and I see many people from my classes here, and I'm just really grateful to speak in front of y'all, but I want to, to, to take that back and to take back what, what SUA was originally started off with. And it was created by the big five. And I'm sorry, but um, I yield my time. Thank you very much. All right, our fourth and final question. How do you plan on creating programs that are inclusive for all students from all backgrounds and abilities? I'm going to start on this side. So there, there are many programs I do definitely want to start off with. Um, I did see in Tamara's platform she wanted to bring Chance the Rapper, which is awesome. But in 2014, it cost about $34,000 just for him. But he dropped a cool album since then. So imagine the cost within that three-year three, three year gap of, of trying to bring Chance. But however, that's her agenda. I'm speaking on my agenda. I think working closely with uh, the different organizations that I've been a part of, um, um, definitely addressing mental health and con connecting with people um, through um, implementing programs and um, reciprocating within the student organization here on campus will uh, make a balance with um, the overarching of making student life come back to life because I think working closely on established um, little things and trying to make that more well known and out there will make um, our school uh, a more livelier place here on campus. Thank you very much. Uh, I will reread the question again. How do you plan on creating programs that are inclusive for all students 
from all backgrounds and abilities. You have the floor. So this is something that I already think about when I plan my programs. I want more than just the way that I lead, the way that I lead, I don't lead people with just my identity. I don't speak to people just my identity. I want to come up with programs that everyone can feel involved in. So for example, with the things that I do, when it came with the food pantry, I placed it at Oprah's, not only because I wanted to have that connection with Oprah's because to go make food insecurity more visible. I wanted to go open up the volunteers to everyone. So anyone who wants to go volunteer, they're able to. That's why I go out to freshman classes. So anyone who wants to go get involved with the student life office, that maybe ethical works aren't their thing, volunteering is thing, there's something here for them. When it comes to addressing mental health, it's like the things that I do is that I work with Gary Dunn to go have Let's Talk be placed right next to the Ethnic Resource Center in the Moakma Room because if being engaged in volunteering isn't their thing, or maybe being engage, more engaged in mental health services but that affects students of color, maybe that might be their thing. When it comes to like planning the concert, I want it to go be free for everyone because the biggest problem that we had with the last concert is that it costs way too much for students to attend. And we need more events where we display, um, where we display artists of color. And that's why that event was so, I feel like that's why that event meant so much to me to go have Daniel Caesar on campus. Because most of the events that we have, like Rock and Roll on the Knoll or even West Fest, they, they are like more rock and roll events. And I wanted, and I want to go have more events where people can see other people like them and everyone can come together no matter who you are and that everyone can enjoy all the events equally, whether or not you're in an ethnic ward or not. I want events that ev I want events and programs that everyone feel like they're welcome to. Sorry, that was long. No worries, <laughs> you're well within time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you will each have 30 seconds of concluding remarks. We're going to start with Tamara and then followed by. Cool. So, the reason why I joined SUA in my freshman year as an Oak student was because there was complaints within my Senate that the SUA doesn't represent students of color. And I completely agree that. I completely agree with that to an extent because I have felt uncomfortable in that space. Even when it came to me just getting the positions that I've had within the SUA, I've met a lot of pushback for the people who've known me. And the reason why I stay in the SUA and I continue to keep on, like, keeping my positions and keep on working, no matter how much shit I get, is because I feel like it's important for people who want to get things done, who are motivated to stay within the assembly. Experience, we need more experienced people as officers. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out here and listening. Uh, I feel as if uh, SUA lacks uh, representation of many faces and many orgs. So I want to bring a new face, a fresh face in. There are a lot of people who stay in SUA and grow with SUA, and I feel like that's just a bubble. I feel like having people outside of that bubble from student life, putting them in into the assembly would, would definitely be beneficial. And I stand for advocacy, and I stand with the student agency model. And I thank you for being here. Vote for me, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Thank you, candidates. Please return to your seats. That was spiky. <laughs> down and respect the speaker. Hi everyone, my name is Catherine Lay. I'm a second year politics and legal studies double major and I am running to be a candidate for the vice president of diversity and inclusion position. Thank you. Uh, we will begin with our first question. What are your thoughts on the May Day actions, ABSA's Clark Kerr reclamation, and or other demonstrations which have occurred on campus over the past year. What to you is the relationship between direct action, organizing, and the SUA space? Thanks for your question, Bryce. Um, so the May Day organizing event, as well as the APSA reclamation, um, were two recent organizing and direct action events that did happen on campus. Um, 
UC Santa Cruz has always been embedded in the idea of activism, in the idea of um, students voicing their opinions and making themselves visible and heard when they do not dis do, when they do not agree with something that's going on, especially with the administration or a powerful issue that is particularly important to them. Um, with the May Day event as well as the APSA Reclamation, I think that those two events are extremely crucial to recognize um, and respect on this campus because um, those are events and movements that are working towards making sure that marginalized groups on this campus are being heard, um, that marginalized groups on this campus should be supported and should be seen, um, and that they are under-resourced on this campus, particularly talking about um, the ABSA Reclamation event, as well as workers on this campus too. Workers are not paid nearly enough to be able to sustain themselves in Santa Cruz, where we have um, a really, really awful state of living in terms of um, rent and um, this disproportionately affects um, students of color, and it's absolutely clear, and students with intersecting identities. So direct action is one of the many ways that activism can be portrayed and activism can be pursued. Um, and again, with the history of UC Santa Cruz and how activism has consistently been a part of our narrative, it's extremely important that from now onward, and even in the past, Going forward, it's so important to be able to uplift these events and support communities when um, they need it the most. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. We will now be moving on to your next question. It reads, what will you do during your term to address all forms of religious intolerance, specifically addressing the frequently ignored but significant issue of anti-Semitism? Okay, thank you for that question. Um, so for me personally, I'm from San Jose, California. I was raised Buddhist. Um, and this is something that has certainly shaped my identity, and religion has certainly shaped the identity of many folks um, across this campus. Um, there are different organizations um, on this campus that um, do support religious identities, which is incredibly important. Um, Recently, the Muslim Student Association has been doing some work with uh, the SUA regarding prayer spaces um, and things of that nature. Being able to support um, religious identities that are especially marginalized and pushed aside on this campus are so important, especially in today's political um, climate. Um, and to address the topic of anti-Semitism, I think it's important to recognize that um, every religion has Every, everyone has the right to um, practice whatever religion they have on this campus. Um, also, <coughs> when it comes to um, how religions are attacked and different religions are attacked on this campus, solely on the basis of um, a person, so ad hominem attacks, rather than um, attacking the nature in which um, folks in those spaces um, are expressing themselves, is extremely important to recognize the difference between the two. Um, so, in regards to expressing uh, religious expression as well as supporting religious organizations on this campus, that's incredibly important and being as inclusive, and as, inclusive as possible to our students on this campus. Thank you very much. We will move on to your third question. Can you please provide two concrete projects or efforts you will strive towards to benefit minority students on this campus? Okay, awesome. Um, so I'd like to talk about something I'm actually already working on. Um, so currently I am in the process of um, building and fostering a women's coalition with um, a lot of student leaders on this campus, uh, many of which are women of color. Um, this is incredibly important because we don't have a women's coalition on campus currently, um, and women spelled with an X instead of an E to be as inclusive as possible as well. And something stemming from that is that I would really love to create um, and launch a woman of color conference on campus next year, a UCSC woman of color conference. This is something that actually happened last year. It was really disorganized, and it's something that I would really love to streamline and make sure that that happens um, on campus this year because um, I've seen time and time again that a lot of women of color in classes at UC Santa Cruz get shut down or um, a lot of folks speak over them. Um, and as a woman of color myself, I think that it's super important that. Um, they have that space to be able to um, find resources and connect with others. 
Um, another thing that I'm currently working on is uh, with the DRC, the Disability Research Center, um, and especially also recognizing students of colors who all students of color who also have disabilities as well is extremely important. The intersectional identity with that. Um, I passed a resolution through the Student Union Assembly regarding campus ableism, which is extremely important. And something that was particularly concerning to me about uh, my other, the other candidates' um, campaign for the Vice President of Diversity and Inclusion's role is the fact that um, they were talking about helping differently abled folks on this campus to improve hospitality. Um, the term differently abled is a euphemism that was created around the 1980s and it's incredibly patronizing and offensive um, to folks with disabilities to be able to use that term. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that. Um, so it's important to recognize that students with disabilities are not as heard on this campus and that students with disabilities who are students of color as well are not as heard on this campus and uplifting them is extremely important and which I plan to do. Thank you very much. We will now... We will now move on to your fourth and final question. As Vice President of Diversity and Inclusion, how will you bridge the gap between different ethnic organizations? What will you do in order to bring, for example, Mecca and ABSA and other ethnic orgs together? Awesome. So thanks for yeah. Metra, sorry. Yeah. Um, thanks for that question. So, Currently, there are over 150 different student organizations on campus, and many of those are um, cultural and identity organizations. Um, so in regards to ethnic organizations, it's incredibly important that um, there are resources on campus um, to be able to be sustaining and supporting the ethnic resource centers because um, we have to fight for the ethnic resource centers on campus. This is something that didn't just wasn't already there. Um, this is something that has always constantly been a battle. Um, and it's clear that the Student Union Assembly is not necessarily the greatest space for ethnic orgs and community leadership organizations to be present in. Um, the general sentiment that I have seen is that um, many, many ethnic orgs and identity orgs don't necessarily feel welcome in this space, and that's extremely unfortunate that that is the case. Um, as student government leaders, I'm a firm believer that we should not be here to be telling students what they need. We should be here to be listening to students, um, to ask them what they need, to be supportive rather than saying, hey, this is what you probably need. Um, right? And this is the same sentiment that I feel towards um, supporting ethnic orgs on campus, whether it be SUA coming out to um, support any programs that they may need, or outreaching, networking. I plan to have a newsletter to consolidate all the different events that ethnic orgs and identity orgs may have on campus, um, and making sure that there's a clear line of communication and support as well, um, which has not necessarily always been the case um, in the SUA space. Um, and again, supporting things like Metro's resolution or Absal's reclamation are super important um, and uplifting those communities and making sure that we're sharing um, what they have to say and making sure that they're in the limelight. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you have 30 seconds for concluding remarks. Awesome. So again, my name is Catherine Lay. I'm a second year politics and legal studies double major running for the Vice President of Diversity and Inclusion. Um, I've done stuff under the Asian American Pacific Islander Resource Center in Heritage Month, which is month of May, this month right now, which is awesome. Um, I've been involved in College 9 Senate as a student union assembly representative. I've certainly seen um, the perspective of the SUA and I know that it has a lot to improve on. Um, I hope that I have your vote and thank you so much for your time today. Let me know when you all are ready to get the doodles out. <laughs> You're introducing yourself, just briefly. We're just going to go down the line. I'll give, I'll give them a minute. Because I know people are coming down. Hey, oh, if you want more snacks, please take them now. I'll give you a minute while they prepare for the next song speech. Facebook Live, this is also your minute to go get snacks.
popcorn at home. No, like, Go to the dining hall. Go to have the dining a dining hall party. Hello. Thank you. There were some really good ones earlier. I mean, they're all really good. Everyone's really good. We love Facebook Live. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yep. Vincente joined in. 25 people here as of now. Nice. Jonas! Jonas! Say hi. Hello, everyone. Hi, friends. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see these three speak in just a moment. Yep. I'm getting ready to bang it. Getting, getting ready. ready. I'm waiting, waiting orders from Benny. Um, what time is it? It's 8.15. We, so oh, we have so much I was time. thinking of perhaps whatever Kevin is still behind to perhaps open it up to questions from the No audience. problem, Milana. Happy to be here to help. do like one minute. Yeah. Questions from the audience, one minute to respond. Yeah. Have them all line up and yeah. be like, do you have a question for exactly. a particular person? Look how many okay. snacks we have. There's we still have time to get some if you want. We have Classroom unit minutes. two. Yeah. 45 minutes. We'll be here. Maybe. We might leave early. Hopefully not. Depends if the audience has questions. Hey, everyone. And look how many people are here. There were more earlier. They left. Okay, everyone, settle down. Please go back to your seats. We're about to start. All right, we're going to start on this side. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for staying until now. I'm Jane Lepper. I'm running for SBA president. I use she, her, hers. I am a third year plant sciences major. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Maxine Jimenez. I go by Max. I use she, her, they, them pronouns. I'm a second year Presby affiliate, also an RA, and I'm a community studies and politics double major. Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Jones, and uh, I use he, him, his pronouns. I'm a double major in film with a focus on film production, and my other major is uh, of, the, of history with a focus on America's and Africa. All right, thank you very much for your introductions, candidates. We will start with your first question. As a reminder, you will have two minutes to answer each question. Uh, as you saw before, many candidates did finish early, so there should be plenty of time. Um, Again, I will bang the gavel once with 30 seconds remaining, twice with 15 seconds remaining, and three times once your time has elapsed. Uh, once you each answer the first question, we will then move on to the next one. And once we answer all of the questions, there will be 30 seconds for concluding remarks. I will choose you all at random uh, to go first, second, and third for each question, while third will just simply be the one that's left. All right, are there any questions on that? All right, we will start with the first question. What will you do to amplify voices of marginalized students, such as students of colors, LGBTQIA plus students, and students with disabilities? I'm going to start in the middle. Hi, everyone. Um, so to answer that question, um, I believe that we should lead by example. And by doing this, as in running for office as SUA president. This is my way of taking up space. This, is, this institution is already built for the majority and I feel like it's time that we have someone like me be in that space. Not saying that I'm going to represent every person, every marginalized community here or even the identities that I represent, but because of that, I know exactly that it's not me representing this whole group or it's not me saying, I'm gonna make sure that, you know, giving people permission to have their voices heard. What we need to do, we need to move past the idea of providing spaces for students, of holding spaces for students, but instead providing them the resources, leveraging them so that they have the power, they have the resources, they have the support they need in order to create their own students because no one else knows this campus no one else knows what you all need better than all of you. So instead of having a, you know, this little group of people 
um, saying, oh, we need this and we need that, and then not having a lot of attendance, what we need to do instead is talk to them, have conversations. What do you need? We need to indiv individualize students' narratives because that's not being heard as many of the other candidates. I know many of you already feel. Thank you. Uh, we will go next on the right. Would you like me to reread the question? Please, yes. All right. What will you do to amplify voices of marginalized students, such as students of color, LGBTQIA plus students, and students with disabilities? Yeah, um, so first of all, I want to address the fact that I understand that I come from a very privileged background, and I understand that I will never understand what it's like for marginalized communities in, in this day and age in America through historic systematic oppression that is still current today in our times. Now, the best way for what any officer should do when addressing any of these issues is first to listen to the students. And that means by giving up as much time as you possibly can to listen to all students on this campus because every single student on this campus is gonna have a voice in something and you have to be somewhere on campus to listen to these students. You have to, you don't need to be up in like the top tower of the SUA building. Nobody knows where that's at. Nobody even knows what the student union assembly really is in this school. So the best way to do this is to be in a position here on campus somewhere and to open and bridge the gaps between uh, all the ethnic orgs and the SUA. And we really need to start creating a better uh, society on this campus and a better community. And I want to build community because that's important. And that's the best way that I think that you can go about those type of things is literally just to listen and I want to be in support of students of color on campus, and I want to be right there when they need me most to use my privilege to the better of all people. Thank you. Thank you very much. And finally. I think no one's experience on this campus is universal, and I am really aware of that. I think when it comes to uplifting student voices, first of all, I want to be able to bring students into administrative spaces so that they can hold physical space when talking with the powers that be at this university. And secondly, I think it's really important for SUA to set up a system of accountability for itself for, so that when it goes and passes a resolution in support of groups that need it, it can say, how far do we stand with this resolution? We say we support all of the, uh, these ideas, but to what degree are we going to stand by this and go out and make sure that people know that the students stand together? Uh, yield my time to the dais. Thank you. All right, we will be moving on to the next question. It reads as follows. As the president, a large part of your job is providing support to the other officers. In what way Will you support the officers' projects, but also hold them accountable when necessary? We're going to start over here. Yeah, it's a perfect question. That's the perfect thing for what the president should do, is to talk with all the other officers that are going to be there in the student union assembly. And it's the best way to get anything done, as being a good leader, is with them and give them motivation, you know, give them support because constantly belittling people in a space or saying that they're not good enough isn't going to get the best quality out of anybody. So you have to really understand about building that, that confidence in the people. That, that's really how you can really get the best of anything out of, out of a person. And so that's why I think uh, when it comes to any sort of issue, uh, like working with the officer of stage, like student life or whatever. The, I think the point of that is to make sure fun activities come on this campus. And that would be important to see, uh, because that's what the students really are going to want at the end of the day to de-stress. So I think the, the, the president needs to work right alongside with all of the other officers, because that way you can really build up the SUA and get the best out of the SUA that it possibly can be. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you very much. I'm going to reread the question again, because this is a long one. We're going to start on the left side. Great. As the president, a large part of your job is providing support to the other officers. In what ways will you support the officers' projects, but also hold them accountable when necessary? So uh, as parliamentarian in SUA this year, I have been among the officer corps for a lot of the year, and I've seen a lot of the problems that have arisen. A lot of them come from a lack of communication and not, um, a lack of clear boundaries between where people's projects are. I think it's really necessary in order for officer cohesion to happen that people are communicating clearly and also someone be there to enforce boundaries and make sure everyone is on the same page in terms of what the officer corps is trying to accomplish. 
Uh, personally, I want to be able to support any officer to the degree that they need. I'm not going to force my support uh, and like force myself into a project where I'm not wanted because I know people have projects that are very close to their heart and this is uh, an issue that actually did come up in the SUA to some degree this past year. Um, in terms of holding officers accountable, I think that that's something that can be done on a person-to-person -person basis because if a person is like really struggling with the work that they're doing or they're not uh, you know, fulfilling their duty to campus in the right way, I think it's really necessary to check in because a lot of the time that can happen because as students we get overwhelmed and if a student, uh, if a person who is an officer is not upholding their idea of what, or our idea of what campus should be getting out of the SUA, they probably need help and I want to help steer them in the right direction. I yield my time. Thank you very much. And again, I will read the question one more time. Um, it reads, as the president, a large part of your job is providing support to the other officers. In what ways will you support the officers' projects, but also hold them accountable when necessary? Okay. So I'm not afraid to call things out as they are. And as many of you already know, within four months, two officers resigned, or two people from the SOA resigned. And that's a really big indicator that there is an integral problem in the SOA. And as someone who has held non-violent um, non communication workshops and conflict resolution workshops, I have a lot of experience of facilitating these types of spaces. Um, some, a lot of the times, it's not always about being impartial or being the mediator. A lot of the times, we have to call people out. We have to call people in. and. This is, a, a lot of the things that I've seen has a lot to do with ego. And we have to ask ourselves this question. Is it worth having someone not like me or getting the job done? Is this personal or is this something that's work related? We need to be able, just like Jane said, have these, have these boundaries. And communication is a big problem. We can have all the communication that we want, but is it healthy? Is it effective? Is it violent? Is it nonviolent? And we have to go past just talking to each other. Dialogue is one thing, but action is another. And something that I like to do when it comes to holding people accountable is asking them the question. I'm not the type of person to beat around the bush, hey, this happened, whether it be a one-on-one -on -one situation or it's always a case-by-case -case basis. But what we need to do is really pay attention to people's capacity. Um, we are students first. Um, I understand that things have to get done, but we can't be productive if we're tired, if we're hungry, and sometimes all we need is some sleep and some food. And for someone to understand that we're not, you know, just politicians, or we're not politicians, we're students, we're people, and we have to take care of ourselves. Thank you very much. We will now move on to our third question. It reads, what experience do you have with budgetary oversight, given that the president's office oversees roughly $500,000 a year in the SUA budget? We're going to start on the left this time. Hi, um, so having worked in the president's office and uh, managing SOFA to, um, for two of the three quarters this year and being involved in the Student Organization and Funding Advisory for SUA uh, for the entire year, as well as being part of a college senate, which is a funding body. I'm pretty familiar with how, <clears throat> sorry, with how at least the aspect of funding organizations happens. Um, I think that one of the things that I would like really try to advocate for in a potential budget is hopefully if Measure 67 gets passed, a lot more funding would go into uh, SOFA funds because we got 80 applications for funding from SUA this year, and unfortunately, we're just not able to fund everyone, um, and that can be really difficult. Um, I, yeah, as I said, I'm a plant sciences major. I don't do econ, but I've been around budgets, and I'm really, um, I've been familiar with the SUA budget uh, for sure, and I think that it's really important to start off the year with a clear idea of what's going to happen. Although, to be honest, the budget for the preceding year is passed in the spring, so this is not necessarily something that would be coming from any one of us directly. Thank you. I will read the question again. What experience do you have with budgetary oversight, 
given that the president's office oversees roughly $500,000 in SUA budget. We're going to start in the middle. Okay, cool. Funny you ask. I'm, act I'm actually the fiscal co-chair of the Education for Sustainable Living program under SOMECA. Um, this is my job. Um, I know how to do PRs, POs, focal codes. I just went to an interview for a grant um, that I applied for to have all of the organizers go into um, these conferences where we get our speakers from. Um, I'm also an RA, so I know how to do the whole cruise by thing, logistical stuff. I keep a budget tracking sheet, which is actually really complicated. Um, <laughs> I'm not, I don't like math, <laughs> but I am good with Excel. I know how to work spreadsheets. Um, alongside that, um, I have been budgeting this whole year and it's permanent funding, which is like tens of thousands of money. And something that I'd also like to add on is when it comes to monies, we need to hold not just administration and the UC accountable, but SUA accountable for how we allocate our resources and our money. SUA is not a bank. It is not, it is so much more than that. And there are other grants, there are other places on campus and we need to be able to in, be in touch with those organizations because they have pools of money too. We shouldn't be asking for students to pay for things that should already be there. We need to be able to call, if we're calling admin out, saying that they're not being transparent, shouldn't SUA be the same way too? Um, and I know, and I'm not trying to discredit people who are in SUA, because I know they're doing hella work, like I see y'all like staying in your offices, but it's a much deeper problem than that. And we need to stop asking for students for what they don't have and start calling people out on how they manage all the things that they take from us. Thank you. And I'll read it out one more time. What experience do you have with budgetary oversight, given that the president's office oversees the roughly $500,000 SUA budget? Yeah, so I'm uh, involved with Porter Senate, and we do with uh, funding requests there as well. But to really answer your question, I'm, a, I'm an art student. I'm a history student. I really don't, I'm not too smart when it comes to numbers. I don't feel like, you know, that's not where, that's not my strong suit. But it doesn't mean I'm not willing to learn how to deal with a budget. You know, I can pick up things pretty quickly with, over anything. But I feel that uh, when it comes to funds, we need to be allocating these funds into better areas that actually benefit the students, you know, where, where they actually need resources the most. Say, uh, when it comes to what students need the most is just like basic needs. So like say food insecurity, there should be way more money being allocated to, a, uh, to the food bank that uh, the current VP of Student Life has started. I think that that is where more money should be going to. We should also be allocating a larger funds to where we can have fun events on campus. But when it comes to like actually understanding how like money and the and like numbers and the way they move around, I'm not necessarily the smartest person when it comes to that stuff. But really, that, that doesn't doesn't necessarily make me not qualified for the position of presidency. And I yield my time. Thank you. We will now be moving on to your fourth and final question. It reads. And this is a little bit of a long one, so please bear with me. There were issues this year about students resigning from SUA after claiming that there is too much internal corruption. As president, what specifically will you do to ensure SUA will work as a team to better students instead of working individually to prioritize their personal ties? We're going to start on the right. Yeah, so in terms of like, people dropping out of the SUA. If you want to be going on with the SUA, you've got to stick with it. You know, personally, I've sat through this whole, I'm, I'm the current quarter representative of this SUA, and I know that the SUA isn't a functioning body, and I know that voices are being silenced in that space. But that doesn't stop me from going to every meeting. That doesn't make me want to leave the SUA. No, you've got to stick with it to better the students. You can't just give up. That's kind of pathetic, in my opinion. So you have to stick with it. You have to do whatever the whatever you possibly can to better the students. So, uh, to take... <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, as president, I'm like, I'll be a strong leader. I'll, do, I'll get stuff done. Uh, I'll make sure that we utilize the representative positions, you know? These, are, these positions, the representative positions, they can be utilized a hell of a lot more than they are because these students are... They, they have the special know-how know of what each college, individual college is, what they want. 
And all those should be brought into the larger space. And I actually want to hear the voice of all the students and all the representatives. I don't want people to feel that they cannot speak up in those spaces. I do not want people to feel that they have to drop out of the student union assembly because it doesn't get stuff done. No, SUA should be getting a lot done. People should be proud to be in those seats because that is voicing the voice of the students. And that's how I think this president should be running. And I yield my time. <laughs> I will read the question another time, please. There were issues this year about students resigning from SUA after claiming that there was too much internal corruption. As president, what specifically will you do to ensure that SUA will work more as a team to better students instead of working individually to prioritize their personal ties? Uh, there's a lot of things going on in my head. What's my slogan? Minimize corruption. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so I, I can see the hard work that a lot of the people in the SUA are currently working on, and it's real and it's really hard. And I can see that a lot of the, the SUA folks are really have the best intentions for the university and for the student body. But what I don't see is are the SUA officers working cohesively. And we all have these goals. And I'm an organizer, and I've been in an actual union before. And the way that SUA currently stands, there are a lot of barriers that stop these organizing tactics to be in place, which gets things done. So I feel like, you know, honestly, in my opinion, we need to really talk about our projects. And there needs to be this overarching goal that we have to do. And if people are in line, if people talk about what their projects are, and I'm sure they are, but we need, to, obviously, we need to do more of that. How can we all support each other? How can we be cohesive with all of our projects? How can we make sure that our, our, the end goal is what we want as a group? And also utilizing the student organizations. How many people are in the SUA assembly? Like 40? Uh, for, wait, 40, 44. Right, and how many students are there on this campus? 17,000. 17,000. 15 to 17,000. So why is it all up to this small group of people? How can we need to utilize all of the other students by not only going into their spaces, but being present and being engaged in the spaces that they also hold? Because that's really important. This is not a one-way street. We need to be present in a lot of the movements and in all of the events that they hold. Thank you very much. I will read the question one final time. There were issues this year about students resigning from SUA after claiming that there was too much internal corruption. As president, what specifically will you do to ensure that SUA will work as a team to better students instead of working individually to prioritize their personal ties? Yeah, so this is actually something that I've been talking a lot when I give spiels about this campaign. So. First of all, I think that um, in terms of corruption, we can limit that by increasing the level of transparency, as well as making sure that students are, inter uh, students, especially within the assembly, but broader on campus, are interacting with office hours and like publicizing, interacting with um, the officers and the assembly members directly. Secondly, I think one of the reasons that uh, folks may choose to leave the space and one of the reasons I considered when I was an SUA rep last year is that it is a hostile environment. Um, I felt so intimidated the entire year. I spoke maybe once or twice and it still feels like that for many people even though I don't feel that way anymore. Um, I think that SUA is severely lacking in community and we cannot expect students to come into the space and feel comfortable sharing their troubles with us if we don't feel comfortable in that space ourselves. Additionally, I think that it's really important to give the assembly members agency because right now, basically only six officers of the 44 have the resources and the training and like the power among their agendas to go out and serve campus. I wanna train all the assembly members uh, and give them the resources they need to put on programs for campus, to help educate their fellow students, and basically bring SUA back to campus. I yield my time. Thank you very much. That concludes the questioning segment. You each will have 30 seconds for concluding remarks. 
We're going to start in the middle, and then go to the right, and then go to the left. Awesome. So, I was in the SUA space my freshman year. I was the SUA rep. I saw a lot of the issues that were going on, and it's clear that everyone in this room has heard and said a lot about it. About it. Um, what we need to do, um, so I decided to go to different orgs and learn, so I wanted to come back and take what I've learned and implement that into the space from all of the other students in the other orgs that are also doing similar things. Thank you. Hi, yeah, so I'm Jacob Jones, running for SUA president, and I want to make sure that this campus stays beautiful with the luscious green trees on this campus. I love redwood trees. I come from the Avenue of the Giants. So I want to see this campus and the environment be protected. I want to see more appreciation for the arts on campus by bringing uh, art festivals to campus uh, once a quarter. I want to see more community being built. I want to see administration having severe pressure put on, their, on themselves. I want to see just more involvement amongst the students to better the students by the students. Thank you. Thank you. saying that it gives me a lot of hope that there are so many people here who genuinely care about making SUA a better space and work for students in a better and more substantial way. I think that like based on my experience being in the office of the president and like my experience staying in SUA, SUA is in need of some deep fundamental structural change. And that's not going to happen easily. It requires a lot of bureaucracy. There are a lot of obstacles that we built. And I think that going forward, that's definitely something that the president should take into account. Thank you very much, candidate. Um, well, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Um, I am, because we still have 15 minutes left, if the candidates are willing, I can open it up to an open forum, and then all of you can ask one question. If not, then thank you for us for it. No? Um, <laughs> no? Just if the candidates are willing, because we have a lot of time left, so... We can invite any candidate up. Any who candidate who is willing to come up and answer a question, please so, do so. You're not obligated to. We still have time you left. Sit down if, you don't want to. if you do not want to, you don't have to. I just because we still have some time left for the students who came here to ask one question. For Facebook Live, some candidates have left. Um, these are ones who are still here. Anyone? So every candidate, we all welcome to come down. All right, candidates, regardless of the question, you will get one minute to answer it. So same rules, once at 30 seconds, twice at 15, three okay, times once your time is elapsed. Keep it there. So the question is going to be to specific people? Or like yes. yes, I believe so, unless they specify it being a general question. So like they are choosing how it is going to go is each one of you will have a one minute to respond. So if, please, if you have any questions, raise your hand, and then I will be calling on you. Yes. Um, and please, oh, I'm sorry, before that, please specify to which position you're um, asking to. Oh, this is sort of a broader question, that's okay. Oh, okay. Um, I was just curious, who are you guys' uh, larger, how to say, like, political um, role models? You know, who are the candidates in the past and the present that really influenced you as candidates <coughs> Is it okay to do a simple down the line answer, or is anyone eager to go first? <laughs> okay. Can we repeat the question? Can you please repeat no, the question? Just like up. Absolutely. So, okay. uh, my personal question for each one, each one of you, maybe not everyone can answer, that's okay. Uh, my personal question was, who are the candidates in the past and the present that really influenced you? It could be a historical figure, it could be a present one, but a, a political figure that really influenced you a lot. So who is your political role model or historical figure role model that has influenced you a lot? Um, <laughs> I thought it was a different question, but I thought it was more like in SUA, so I'm just gonna answer it that way. I don't know if y'all know Tiffany Lofton. Um, yeah, anyways, <laughs> they, I had a talk with Tiffany and they talked about how it was like during her time and it was really interesting that the tuition hike freeze, by the way, 
that was done during her time, and it's because they sat out in the White House when the White House, what am I saying? But anyway, <laughs> activism and getting things done, and they're just so powerful and not afraid to call things out. And if you know who she is, I see you. <laughs> and I definitely look up to her. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we will be moving this way down the line and then circle back around if that makes sense. So the question was like political figure. Yeah. So I mean, I'm going to answer it quick. Bernie Sanders. Come on. I fucking love Bernie Sanders. So next one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm done. Um, yeah. Tiffany. Uh, Tiffany and Cowles, they worked together at SUA uh, years ago. And also Casey Wheeler, she was the IVP in 2014. She's really inspirational, especially in the FSA space. But historical figure, uh, Jose Rizal, there was this famous quote, no history, no self, no history, no self. So with that, um, I definitely have a lot of intersectionalities, um, learning from him and learning from the books he's, he's written. And I think um, he's a Philippine national hero and I'm held, like closely connected within my roots. Thank you. Kishore? Thank you for the question. I think for myself, a historical political figure would have to be Tip O'Neill, who was the Democratic House leader and Speaker of the House a little bit before we were born. But I think his very, very famous phrase, all politics is local, applies to just about everything I've done from the five or so campaigns I've worked on to my candidacy for SUA. All politics just comes back to people. It doesn't matter if you have the most money, it doesn't matter if you have the most Facebook posts, it's all about what the people want. Thank you. Uh, yeah, hey, it's Jeff again, uh, running for Stevenson Rep. Uh, I'd say Callis Lowe was really cool. He was two time uh, SUA chair and also a Stevenson student. So, I'm cool. Um, United States president wise, I think I'm kind of mixed between FDR and a little bit of Nixon in the progressive way, not in the corruption way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I would say Joe Biden for me. Um, <laughs> Obama Biden duo, I think. Um, Bernie Sanders definitely. I worked in his campaign, so that was fun. But um, I don't know. I just like the free spirit and the fact that sometimes you just gotta keep moving forward. You gotta remain positive. Um, I study in numbers, so I honestly don't read books or politics or anything. <laughs> the reason why I'm in SUA is mainly because my mom inspires me. So my mom, oh, she, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> so like in all honesty, so yeah, in all honesty, it's like my mom, it's like she raised me to give back to people, so that's what I do. I don't follow politics because honestly I think politics are shitty, but um, I just want to do good things. My mom. <laughs> Yeah, likewise, I don't have a politician in mind, but I do have an activist, Linda Sarsour. I look up to her incredibly. Um, I actually got uh, a chance to meet her, and that was definitely a monumental point in my life um, where I've become more interested and passionate about activism since. Also, I think that um, my religion, Islam, definitely leads me towards more um, activism, so yeah. Um. Yeah, I think in terms of a U.S. politician, um, Kristen Gillibrand, she's a U.S. Senator from Illinois, and she um, voted no on all but one, I don't know what happened with the last one, of Trump's cabinet picks, and she was the only U.S. Senator or representative to have that voting record, and I think it's important to resist, resist fascism, resist Trumpism, and um, so I just want to be as an effective um, person and activist and politician as she is. Thank you. Um, I would certainly say that um, Kalwas is an amazing leader inside the SUA space that has previously held the chair um, position. Um, Kalwas held a lobbying workshop at the Someca Summit that recently happened. Um, Kalwas was an amazing Asian American Pacific Islander leader in the space, which is very underrepresented in the government scene, not only here, but also in our uh, actual politics. So I definitely look up to him. Thank you. Uh, met Tiffany, she was so inspiring. Um, I'm uh, yeah, I'm also a big fan of Elizabeth Warren. And then um, I know that like, this is awful because I don't remember this person's name, but the first openly gay mayor of Santa Cruz who studied Tell politics there. here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks. And um, yeah, and I believe currently manages the California state park system in Sacramento is like, 
what I want to do. Um, and I, I think that that was really, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much, candidates. Are there any other questions? Uh, Danny, would you like to choose? So we'll go in order. We'll go with you, and then you, you, and then Palmer. We have 10 minutes remaining, so. <laughs> So my question is specifically for the presidential candidates. What is your stance on Measure 68? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so Measure 68, the Oprah's measure, we are going to start from left and then go to the right. Okay. Um, so the thing is, like, I don't have a particularly strong opinion about this, but I did vote no on Measure 68. Um, I have been observing Oprah's interactions with campus all year and especially with their handling of the 60-40 split and how hard students had to work to get Oprah's to realize that they deserve their fair share. Um, it was ridiculous and I'm really glad that y'all did that work. Um, but like that, in addition to like the, uh, the not great handling of the finances that has been going on, like just makes me very much have like a lack of trust in Oprah's. Like, I do ultimately think that like athletics are important to many people, which is why I felt very conflicted about voting for this. Um, but like I, I, Oprah's as a system of management, I just do not feel warmly about at this time in my life. Yeah. Thank you. So Oprah's mismanagement of money is affecting the students, and it's ridiculous how we have student fees. So students can have something that should be already pro uh, provided by the university is like happening rather than calling administration out, calling Oprah's out for not handling the money the way it should be. And that's, those are my views. This is, um, I feel like it's a divide and conquer thing where they're turning students against students because you have students, you know, oh, vote for this. And it's like, no, 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 this is Oprah's. Like we need to move past that and stop asking students to pay for more when we're not getting what we need already. Thank you. Yeah, I'm uh, completely for Measure 68 because uh, a lot of the uh, I have a lot of athletic friends on campus, and they really support Measure 68. And I'm a man of the people, and so. Oprah's, uh, sure, I don't believe we should necessarily pay more money, but Oprah's is a small facility and it needs to be expanded. We also need to have more appreciation going towards the athletics on campus. Just because we have Vision 3, just because our athletes are Vision Division 3 does not mean that they're any less important than Division 1 athlete. And that's how I side on the issue. Thank you, candidates. Is there another I question? I saw your hand. Um, Yes, I, um, mine is actually directed uh, to Tamara and to her opponent. Um, I was concerned with the discourse on the issue of activism, especially when both candidates said that they prioritize social justice, to hear that um, you made the argument that student activism is well enough or adequately funded, especially in this time of turmoil when we have Trump as a president and we have an era when activism is more important than it's ever been. How do you intend to assure students, given that your stance was that it was adequately funded, that that is actually the case and that the student activism will continue to be a priority for you going forward if you elected, if re-elected? Are both candidates clear on that question yeah. or would they like it restated? No. All right. My would you like I it restated? Uh, fine. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I never said it wasn't, ad I wasn't, I never said that it wasn't adequately funded. I said that we are making steps towards it because that hasn't been done in the past. Yes, there can be more steps that, yes, we can do more things, and that doesn't, yeah, sorry. I'm like, yes, we can do more things, but I never said that what we're doing is enough. And I never said that anything that we do in the SUA is ever enough either. So I don't know how else you want me to answer the question, I'm sorry. But yeah, I never said that it was good enough, like what we're doing is perfect, because I absolutely don't believe that, but yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that question because I, um, activism is the reason why I came to UCIC. I came um, here on an outreach program when I was a senior in high school and that is a form of activism. Reaching out to POCs, re reaching out to minorities and being up here for a three day to night um, program was the reason why I wanted to 
pursue activism. But I do think we do need more support from different organizations. I feel as if, um, I still feel as if I'm being underrepresented in many ways because different microaggressions, different oppression from the majority or from the people. But I think, you know, we are, we are human beings too and I think I will be sure to have programs and to make personal connections and live by this, like I mentioned earlier, the student agency model. Make like Tiffany brought. She, this is just like making sure that we have those connections with people and bring activism back to life here on campus. Thank you, candidates. Uh, we have five more minutes. Is there another uh, question? Someone hand you and then. Yeah, uh, this question is directed to Tamara. Uh, one of the biggest items on your platform is to bring Chess the Rapper to campus for another free concert. Seeing on Twitter to become like a household name with people our age, I can see this costing easily over six figures. He's huge. Three, gar three Grammys, huge successful album. So I'm just curious, how do you plan on making this a reality given the enormous potential cost? Because nothing is truly free. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> that's the thing. I'm not gonna. That's the thing. If it costs over a hundred grand, well then we're not going to go put it on. However, I work with Jose Olivas from the Dean of Students Office, and he does work with a lot of he does work with a lot of um, agencies and also agents and music artists. We were able to go get Daniel Caesar on campus for only ten grand. We got Anderson Pap on ca campus last year for only three grand. So he works with the agencies to go make sure that we have a better deal. So I'm like, yes, if it's a hundred grand, I'm not gonna do a repeat of Edge of Eden where it costs us only 80 grand. I'm not going to do that. But yes, nothing is ever free, but I wanna make sure that the events that the SWE does have and does host is free for students because charging them money when they already pay the SWE money isn't really okay in my opinion. But yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have approximately two or three more minutes. Is there another question? So this question is directed at the candidates who are running for the officer positions. Measure 67 is an expansion of the Measure 8, and there's a lot of conversation about corruption within the assembly in terms of how resources are allocated, or there's a lot of controversy regarding that. So as candidates, do you support Measure 67? If not, why? And if you support Measure 67, how will you ensure that those funds are allocated towards the betterment of student interests? Thank you. Oh, sure. Um, okay, so first of all, I am in support of Measure 67. Uh, I already mentioned it tonight. Um, I think that SUA as a whole, when it comes to its budgeting, needs to be publicizing its budget more and like, not all students are interested in reading a budget, so we need to work to make it into like a digestible format. But the fact that SUA funds a lot of the events that happen on campus, and I personally want SUA to fund a lot more, means that like the money that students pay into SUA is seen all around campus. Um, and yeah, I think transparency is definitely a must. We need to make these things more accessible. We need to share them on social media as well as probably a campus-wide email would be really helpful. Um, and then I think like keeping in touch with students by doing more student surveys regarding how SUA is functioning, including how it's spending its money, will definitely help SUA keep in touch with uh, if it is doing that right. Uh, um, well, is, yeah. is that directed to all the presidential candidates? I actually want to answer sure. that question. All right. Yeah, so like I said, like I've been saying, I don't think we need to keep asking students for more money. I did vote yes, however, this is a systemic issue. Um, this is not something we keep asking students for because there's going to be inflation and there are going to be more students to provide for and we're never going to have enough money, let's be real. And so what we need to do instead is really hold Allen accountable. And there are a lot of organizers on campus who don't even receive stipends. I get paid $2 an hour for a 20 hour week. Like, yeah, like when you do the math. So. Really, all it is is not asking students for more money. That's a band-aid solution. So we need to hold admin, we need to hold those people who are handling all the money accountable for all the budgeting stuff because we can't keep doing this. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, of course I support Major 67. We need more funds to go towards uh, the, the SUA. Now, the thing is, I will make sure that those funds get allocated and go directly back to the students. I will not allow administration to get their grimy hands on the cash that students are paying for. So, that's basically the short end of the stick. Uh, send it on. Uh, <laughs>
So this was for the officer, so if the officer wants to answer them, they can. Of course. Yeah, so um, I'll answer this question because I actually wrote Measure 67, and I was actually asked to go write this over the summer by the officer corps because as we were going over our budget, it turns out that we don't have enough money to keep on sustaining the way that we're spending due to the increases in minimum wage and also the mandatory increase that we have to go have for our SUA advisor, which is around 3% every year. So what's been happening over the last 10 years is that the SUAs actually have been going through budget cuts. So we've cut funding that we give to the registered student organizations by over 10 grand in the last three years. And if we keep on, and if we keep have to go compete with the minimum wage, we're gonna keep on cutting from that programming and we're gonna keep on cutting from everywhere else because we can't afford to pay it. That's the reason why I wrote it. And because the last time that this measure was assessed was in 2003. Most measures should be assessed every 15 to 20 years to go adjust for inflation, to go adjust for minimum wage, to go adjust for the amount of students that we have. So this measure isn't going to be, if this measure isn't gonna keep on coming back every year, then that's gonna probably come back as maybe 20 years when this campus expands even more. We have more students and we have more jobs. Thank you. Um, so as I voted yes on Measure 67 for a lot of the reasons already stated, I think it's important to um, support the groups that are getting the funds through SUA. I think it's important to support campus-wide events and organizations such as the Food Pantry. And also, uh, through my work on SBAC this year, I have um, discovered that although Santa Cruz pays the most campus pays fees, our student government fee is the lowest of any campuses, and that really means that we miss out on a lot of the opportunities that other campuses have, and not just like fun concert opportunities, like opportunities to organize and advocate for student needs, essential needs like housing and food security. So I think Measure 67 um, is definitely something that will benefit students in the long run. Thank you. Are there any other officers that wish yeah, to answer? I can answer that as well. Yep. Um, so while I am I am in support of the measure, um, I also do, do not agree that um, student fees should be going up. We already have so many student fees already. Um, I've been on the student org um, funding advisory before, and it really disheartens me that we actually can't fully fund organizations that should be able to like throw a cultural show or like should be able to um, have whatever uh, cultural event that they would like to have. For example, right? Um, we should be here to be supporting students, and if we don't have the means to be able to do that, that's highly unfortunate. Um, UC Santa Cruz has one of the low, lowest budgets in student government across the entire UC system. Um, so it is incredibly important to make sure that um, students and organizations still have um, a means of being able to fund their events and programs. Thank you. Are there any last officers? Yes. Um, I did and I do support of this measure. However, I think we should allocate the funds um, better. I don't believe in the increase of officer pay, if that was one of the proposals on there, because for me personally, I really don't need that extra money. I work and I know what, it, what it's like to do hard work. Um, also, um, like what Kat said, like there are some organizations here on campus that do not have enough money to put on their, their own culture show. For example, the African Student Union. Um, one of my good friends, she's a co-chair, um, Beatty, and she reached out to me because she was, they were actually not gonna have the, their show because of the lack of funding that they had. But um, I reached out to her and asked her what, you know, what needed to be done. And I think being able to support these organizations that do need this money, we, we should allocate the funds more efficiently. And I think with that measure increase, um, working collectively, um, we would be able to do that. Thank you. Uh, we have one more question and then that will be it for tonight. Yeah, yeah so this question is directed for the presidency candidates. So we've heard a lot about basic student needs and like security. 
I just want to hear your opinions on student housing and the housing crisis, as well as the increase of cost of living and how students <coughs> and their relationship to like financial aid and increasing cost of living and all that, and just housing security for the coming up. Most of you might know that currently like renovation and like all that stuff. Uh, so for this one, we will start on the right and then go left. Yeah. So you're talking about the crisis, uh, the housing crisis, correct? Yeah, so the housing crisis is really bad in this in Santa Cruz, and it's a huge issue. Now, I feel like the president needs to put direct pressure on the administration to make sure that the housing crisis gets addressed the way it should be. It should, uh, we shouldn't be paying so much money in housing for houses that aren't necessarily up to code in some cases downtown. That's unfair for the students. Um, we're, there's movement to try to construct more uh, housing on campus that could lead to devastation upon the land that already is here, that is land that we, uh, that doesn't necessarily, in my opinion, doesn't belong to us, it belongs to the tribal people before us, as in we should be talking to the Amu Mats and tri uh, tribal band for those type of issues. And that's how I think about the housing crisis. So I don't know. Cool. Okay, so I facilitate a five minute section here on campus that address the housing, the housing insecurity. Um, I also have held educational forums and teach-ins. I have close connections to not only students here on campus who are working on house, the housing issue, but also locals who are at doing direct assistance of how students can have, um, like get a place to stay, but also um, direct um, advocacy so that students can fight for stricter tenant rights and renter laws because they do not exist and in my opinion and we don't have one rent lawyer who specialize in tenant rights and I want to be able to fight for that because that's needed and if I were elected to be president I can definitely bring those resources on a larger scale because they are important both direct assistance in getting housing and also direct advocacy in fighting for tenant rights and just building more housing in general affordable housing may I um, so I think that uh, beyond helping students directly in terms of like relationships with landlords and uh, finding housing, it's really important that SUA speak for students on the level of the city government uh, because there have been moves to get more affordable student uh, more affordable housing that students could live in in Santa Cruz, but a lot of the locals here uh, who are more likely to show up to student council meetings. Uh, are opposed to that uh, because they don't necessarily want to be living next to students. And I think it's really important that SOA advocate for students on that level. I think it's also important that we make sure that this, our, our unique problem where we're surrounded by natural reserve on all side and like an ocean on the other side and like expansion in Santa Cruz is just logistically difficult, is understood on the level of the UC president. Um, because that is something that's been really challenging to communicate and I definitely want to work to make sure that people understand that we have a very unique Unique problem here, and it needs addressing and we need help Yeah Thank you very much candidates uh, that concludes our question and answer session yeah. um, Sorry, I mean because of time we it, what what is your question long or? Uh, it's just a long question. Um, uh, it is 9.08, okay. 7. Um, we have this room until 9 o'clock, but I'll let you uh, um, ask that question. But then we have to go because um, they will kick us out eventually. So. Yeah, so the question is actually for the EVP, for the folks who are running for the EVP. Um, so it's how will you maintain student interest in in the office. I've been mansplained many times and it's amazing. It sucks. But in terms of administration, um, a lot of the times, yeah, we do get pushback from administration. We get pushback from regents. I think one thing I've learned from being EVP currently and that we can improve on is, like I said before, using the organizing director position this year to ensure that we hold weekly meetings with other leaders on campus 
so that no voices go unheard, and then bringing that back to the external affairs office so that through policy, through the legislative side of the office, we push for the policies that we can all agree on and we can all insist on. And I have been in heated discussions with Blumenthal and um, Jenna Boizano where I'm constantly just trying to call them out on the fact that, like Jane said, we do have very um, um, unusual like struggles we deal with here in Santa Cruz. And if there's more of a student of color voice in them, I understand the importance of that and I myself have been trying to work past that as well. So it is difficult, but I have that in mind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, thank you so much for coming. One more, uh, round of applause for our family. And uh, to remind you all, tomorrow we are having a voter takeoff. Uh, it starts at 12 p.m. in the quarry. We're going to have free food, Santa Cruz Taqueria. So please come. We're going to have voting stations there for people to vote and get a plate of food, and then you can head off to, to enjoy your weekend. So thank you so much for coming back. Take Remem Remember to vote at elections.ucsc.edu. Goodbye.